Quentin Tarantino is one of the most acclaimed directors of all time. His movies are inventive, imaginative, and flip the scripts on their heads. In all of his creative genius, his biggest triumph is secretly placing all of his movies within the same universe. This may seem like a crazy thought, but if you think about it, each and every movie so far has happened within the same timeline. Quentin Tarantino only has eight movies, so this seemingly far-fetched theory can actually work quite well. All of his movies take place on Earth, in a realistic setting, and focus on the interactions of the characters. Tarantino has dropped subtle hints in each of his movies that give us some insight into this incredible world building. Join us as we take a look behind the screen at how and why all of Quentin Tarantino's movies are connected. Quentin Tarantino is widely known for including specific elements and scenes in most of his movies. Nearly every one of his films contain a character looking at themselves in the mirror, an upward shot of characters looking into the trunk of a car, and a long shot of someone traveling from one location to another. Also women's feet, for some reason. Furthermore, his unique writing and style of filmmaking make it incredibly easy to tell when you're watching a Quentin Tarantino. Even when his films have vastly different settings and plots, the over-the-top tone of each film makes it clear that Tarantino is behind the project. This unique vibe is a big part of the reason why fans picked up on Tarantino's movies all taking place in the same universe so quickly. The first sign that the famed director's movies are all connected stems from a scene in his second film, Pulp Fiction. In this 1994 movie, Uma Thurman's Mia is describing a TV pilot she filmed to John Travolta's Vincent. The show is called Fox Force 5 and centers on a group of female secret agents who all have unique skills. When Tarantino's fourth movie, Kill Bill, came out in 2003, fans quickly noticed something strange. What? The backstory of the film perfectly matches Mia's description of her show. In Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2, The Bride, also played by Uma Thurman, is out to get revenge against her former team of female assassins and their leader after they betrayed her. At the time of Pulp Fiction's release, nobody thought that this scene was foreshadowing for another movie. Fans quickly started to reason that perhaps Mia's show was based on the exploits of the deadly Viper assassination squad in Kill Bill. Once this obvious connection between two of Tarantino's movies became a more popular theory, fans started noticing even more little details that anchored his films to the same universe. One of the biggest connectors in the Tarantino-verse is the Red Apple cigarette brand. Rumor has it that Tarantino wanted his characters in Pulp Fiction to smoke name-brand cigarettes, but didn't want to pay the licensing fees necessary to use a real brand in his movie. A pack of Red Apples. While packages featuring the Red Apple logo are in several scenes in Pulp Fiction, a billboard advertising the brand is prominently featured in Kill Bill. The fictional brand would also appear in films written by Tarantino and connect them to his broader universe as well. The brand appears in the action horror film From Dusk Till Dawn, which Tarantino wrote and starred in following the success of Pulp Fiction. Red Apple also appears in the anthology comedy movie Four Rooms. Tarantino wrote, directed, and performed in the last of the movie's four stories, Penthouse, The Man from Hollywood, where the trademark cigarettes appear. Oddly enough, Red Apple also appears in the 1997 comedy Rami and Michelle's High School Reunion. Quentin Tarantino wasn't involved in this film whatsoever, yet a poster advertising Red Apple appears in the movie. It was later explained that this appearance was due to the fact that Tarantino was dating one of the film's leads, Mira Sorvino, during production, and the poster was added to reference his connection to the movie. Rami and Michelle's high school reunion is certainly unlike the other movies in the Tarantino-verse, but the more the merrier, and the movie is way too much fun to leave out of any Tarantino movie binge. Another connecting element in the Tarantino-verse that starts with Pulp Fiction centers on a white Honda Civic. Driven by Bruce Willis's character Butch, and no, not even Bruce Willis can make a Honda Civic look cool, the car appears in several scenes in the iconic movie. This same white Honda Civic would appear in two of Tarantino's other movies as well. In the crime thriller Jackie Brown, the titular character drives the car over the course of the movie. The same car would appear again in Killville Volume 2. Although it only appears for a brief moment, it's clearly parked outside of the My Oh My strip club. A car appearing in multiple pieces of media might seem like a minor connection between them, but it's actually a pretty popular means to establish a shared universe. There are also loads of connecting threads in the Tarantino-verse that center on the names of various characters. 
As several of his movies take place several decades apart from one another, characters having the same last name implies the two may be related. For instance, in the 2012 movie Django Unchained, the bounty hunter Django carries with him the wanted poster for the first ever criminal he turned in. That bounty was for the train robber Smitty Bacall and listed his accomplices as Dandy Mickles, Gerald Nash, and Crazy Craig Coons. Although the bounty flyer does help Django escape from capture later in the film, the names of the gang don't really impact the film too much. However, another character with the last name Coons appears in Pulp Fiction. Portrayed by Christopher Walken, Captain Coons is a Vietnam War veteran who gives Butch his father's gold pocket watch. It also seems like his grandfather or great-grandfather's craziness may have rubbed off on the captain because the only way he was able to deliver the watch was by hiding it in his rectum for several years. Tarantino fans were also quick to notice that Christoph Waltz's Dr. Schultz might have connections to other characters in the Tarantino-verse. In Kill Bill Vol. 2, the bride is buried alive and has to use her martial arts training in order to escape from the gravesite. May I have a glass of water, please? However, before she punches her way out of the ground, we see a tombstone marked Paula A. Schultz, who passed away in 1893. Many theorize that this grave marker could belong to Dr. Schultz's wife or another of his relatives. Sure, the timeline in this connection is a little rough considering Schultz's passing in 1859, but it's clear by now that Tarantino doesn't put these kind of references in unintentionally. Well, except for the magically refilling glass at the beginning of Inglorious Bastards, that's just a continuity error. Speaking of Inglorious Bastards, there's another connection to the broader Tarantino verse in this film. In this movie, Michael Fassbender plays an English soldier named Archie Hickox, a film critic with a background in German cinema who was sent on a special mission to infiltrate the premiere of the German army's latest propaganda film. In Tarantino's eighth film, aptly titled The Hateful Eight, we meet another character named Hickox who is of English ancestry. Although he goes by Oswaldo Mowbray for most of the film, Pete Hickox is a member of the Domergue gang. Tim Roth portrays this villainous character, and it's all but confirmed that Pete Hickox is the ancestor of Archie Hickox. In fact, Roth would say in an interview that he isn't exactly sure of the Hickox family line, but that Quentin Tarantino definitely intended for the characters to be related. Let's jump all the way back to Tarantino's first film, 1992's Reservoir Dogs. In this movie, Harvey Keitel's Mr. White mentions no longer committing crimes with a woman named Alabama. The very same Alabama would appear in a romantic crime movie, True Romance, and was portrayed by actress Patricia Arquette. The plot of this Tarantino-scripted film revolves around an Elvis fanatic and his former escort wife trying to sell a large bag of narcotics that accidentally comes into their possession. Although the deal eventually falls through, they attempt to sell the bag to a film producer named Lee Donowitz, portrayed by Saul Rubinek. This film producer is in fact the son of Eli Roth's Donnie the Bear Jew Donowitz, a central character in Inglorious Bastards, and a pretty central character to the world of the Tarantino-verse, since he kind of ended World War II almost single-handedly. Speaking of Tarantino's debut film, there's another connection between Reservoir Dogs and the filmmaker's larger connection of movies. The closest thing the film has to a proper antagonist is Mr. Blonde, a career criminal who revels in physically harming and tormenting anyone he can. Although it's only mentioned briefly, the actual name of the character portrayed by Michael Madsen is Vic Vega. If that last name sounds familiar, it's because John Travolta portrays Vic's brother Vincent Vega in the movie Pulp Fiction. It's also worth mentioning that Vic Vega mentions his intense dislike for his parole officer Seymour Scagnetti during his flashback. Now the movie is way too busy depicting these criminals slowly turning on each other for Scagnetti to actually appear in the movie, but the unseen character does tie the project to another Tarantino film. Seymour's apparent brother Jack Scagnetti, who's portrayed by Tom Sizemore, appears in the controversial 1994 film Natural Born Killers. Written by Tarantino, this film follows the exploits of a serial killer couple as they are pursued by the sleazy and morally questionable Detective Scagnetti. Even as the detective does detain the couple for a bit, his victory is largely short-lived and the two escape any repercussions for their heinous actions. The final piece of evidence connecting all of Quentin Tarantino's films as a part of the same universe centers on another fictional brand, Big Kahuna Burger. Although most people know of the fictional brand from Samuel L. Jackson's famous Royale with Cheese speech, the Hawaiian burger chain appears in several of the filmmaker's movies. 
The fast food joint gets a shout out or makes a subtle appearance in From Dusk Till Dawn, Reservoir Dogs, Four Rooms, and even Death Proof, where Kurt Russell's character Stuntman Mike mentions it by name. With that burger-filled link, every one of Quentin Tarantino's films now has something connecting it to another of his movies, which creates a larger Tarantino-verse. While the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the DCEU get a lot of deserved praise for creating impressive collections of intertwined media, Tarantino has been doing the same thing since 1992. While he uses the concept of a connected universe more subtly, it's no less impressive than the more recent media juggernauts. Also, and this is really worth mentioning, Tarantino also appeared as an Elvis Presley impersonator in the 1998 episode Sophia's Wedding. This, without any doubt, means that the otherwise wholesome and grounded show is in fact a part of Tarantino's universe of gory and over-the-top films. That truly is nothing short of amazing, and a part of what makes media and the world of entertainment so incredible. What do you think of the Tarantino-verse and the threads connecting each of the films in Quentin Tarantino's catalog of movies? Or are there any subtle references that we missed in this video? Feel free to let us know in the comments section down below. We really appreciate it, and your support helps out the channel quite a bit. We have a bunch of incredible film theories like these already on the channel, and even more coming soon. You're really not going to want to miss a single one of them. To help with that, be sure to click on the bell icon. That way you'll get a notification as soon as we upload a new video. If you hurry, you can check out the newest theories and breakdowns out before anyone else has the chance to.